So this is gonna be this is gonna be a little bit of an interesting video. Um, I'm not gonna say controversial because I don't like the word controversial. I don't think con I think it's just gonna be a great great video talking about retraction of medical articles. A lot of people don't realize that from time to time, actually very frequently, articles are published and their findings are later retracted. Um, I'm gonna be posting stuff on this in social media and actually doing a separate um, Facebook post on an article from. Dr. Ioannis, who's one of the top researchers in, in Europe, in Italy, and talking about about 50% of medical research, the findings are later found to be false, even the stuff put in some of the most prestigious medical journals. Um, you know, that's, this is the reason why working with a clinical practitioner, someone who has years of experience not only reading research, but also applying it, who knows the breadth of the research, so when stuff pops up and it doesn't sound quite right, you know, they don't, just don't jump on the bandwagon. You know, medicine by technocrats, Medicine by research articles um, would, ha would drive you crazy. It, it changes what you do on a day-to-day, -day, week week-to-week basis. And a lot of you all actually are experiencing that because you're hearing conflicting information. Well, this happens in medicine all the time. So having a, a firm foundation in the literature and environmental science and biologic science and pathology and physiology and all the ologies helps you understand research better. And so when something comes out and says, this drug no longer works, you can say, well, it's worked for me for years. Um, I personally have uh, 20 years of clinical experience as a, as a physician, and I've been studying medicine for 24 years. So that gives me a repertoire uh, um, of information. I've also practiced in multiple countries, Central and South America, Germany. I've practiced in Florida, um, a university hospital system, um, and now I'm private practice for, uh, for over 10 years. So what's the, what's the buildup? The buildup was there was a retraction from the article on The Lancet saying that hydroxychloroquine does not work. Okay, I'm not trying to be political here at all. I'm not. It's unfortunate that a drug, hydroxychloroquine, which I use for lupus patients and autoimmune patients and in chronic Lyme patients, um, that's been around forever, um, would be controversial. That's kind of it seems kind of bizarre. But literally, the Lancet retracted their publication stating that um, hydroxychloroquine did not work um, in, in COVID-19. And I think the details are more important than the actual information. And these, again, will be posted below um, this video, just for those of you who want to actually see the retraction from Lancet, as well as the evaluation from Science Magazine um, and some other places. And the gist was is that the company that was collecting data that was used um, for the study the Lancet published was a, a relatively obscure company. No one really knew who they were. And we don't even know how they got the data. Supposedly, they had access to data from all these places that major universities um, my research company didn't have access to, but they had access to these medical records, pulled the data and said, lo and behold, look, this doesn't work. The result was the World Health Organization stopped all their research on hydroxychloroquine. It was pulled from many countries. And you all you know, heard about everything happening several weeks ago. Well, lo and behold, their th a third party came around and said, wait a second, this doesn't look quite like, let's validate this. We want your data. And typically in clinical research, if someone says they want their data, it's published. It's in the article. You can find it. They didn't release their data. They couldn't validate where they got the data from. And the result was Lancet pulled their, they basically retracted this whole thing. That caused, so basically, initially, hydroxychloroquine might work, zinc, et cetera. Um, it was controversial if it did or didn't. Um, article came out probably three or four weeks ago, published from Lancet. Oh, it doesn't work. And so a big Politic, not only a scientific, but a political um, storm, kind of, sort of. And now we're finding that being retracted by Lancet, which is, one, if not the most, one of the most um, well-respected journals in the English-speaking world. It's the British version of the New England Journal of Medicine. I've actually personally published in Lancet back in 2016. It took two years to do, by the way, two years, with a lot of people working on it, multiple different studies. So um, that's usually how long it takes for research to get published, not four to five months. Um, but anyway, I think that's important because as we go through this, you're going to see things that don't kind of jive. And that's why getting good sources of information, people that can actually analyze the data for you, can help you understand it. Um, and working with a practitioner for your own health that understands literature and data that's in it on a regular basis, that's reading it. Um, and it can help you understand and wade through some of the stuff, particularly now when we not only have a health issue and all the usual social things, but special social unrest you know, there's so much unknown right now. You want to, if something as basic as your health, how can you, how can you stand for other people's rights? Um, how can you, how can you stand for what you believe is, how can you either speak out or, or whatever, whatever you're doing, how can you do that if literally you don't have your own health? If you don't have the energy and strength 
to do a video, to type, to share things? How can you actually stand for what you believe in if you don't have your own health? For me, that's that's a big issue. You know, as a medical physician, I want people to be able to achieve their dreams, their goals. And literally, if you're sick and you don't have the right information, you're not doing the right things. You know, back in the um, the late '70s, early '80s, you know, low, you know, low low fat diets, high carb diets. You know, artificial sweeteners were healthy for you, right? Fat was bad. Well, now we know healthy fats are good, and it's. If if you understood the literature, you you would have known back then. And somehow, my grandfather, and my parents knew. You know, they grew up eating butter and eating eggs, and they didn't pull those things out of their of their diets. And now we know that actually healthy eggs are superfood. We know that healthy fats like olive oil, um, like healthy omega threes and sixes, are required for making babies' brains. If you want babies to be smart, you need if they have low omega three levels. It affects their IQ, right? So I think this this just helps bring what we cl- clinic um, practitioners deal with on a daily basis. You know, how do we interpret literature? It's just now. It's out there for everybody to see. So again, I'm going to publish the, put these below. Um, with the retraction of hydroxychloroquine, people will ask, what does this mean? The answer is, I don't know. Ivermectin's already had some great data out there as well. We're still looking at these things. Um, there's a lot of other things to do to influence inflammation, which we'll be talking about as we pivot to resilience, which I think, you know, getting back to resilience, what can you do to maximize your health inflammation-wise, diet-wise, respiratory-wise, nutrition-wise? Um, you know, there are actually, you know, tonic water, has small amounts of chloroquine and people have been drinking tonic water for millennia, uh, well, hundreds, hundred, at least a hundred years. Um, there are a lot of things you can do naturally to help boost your immune system. And so that's what we're going to kind of be talking about as we go forward. Again, if this was helpful, please um, share with your friends. Um, uh, take care and be well.